Hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this video, I want to show you how you can divide uh, the mesh faces into a series of groups uh, based on their colors. So for this example, uh, as you can see here, uh, I can extract each of these mesh faces based on their area and divide them into different groups and use them in your project. So this is going to help you to actually uh, have each of these faces which are similar in area uh, to groups and extract the results. Okay, let's take a look at the example file step by step so I can explain uh, the algorithm. Uh, the first step is to define a rectangle which is going to be uh, the size of the mesh. This is just to make a simple parametric mesh from mesh plus so we can divide the faces later. Uh, I'm going to use a rectangle and use a mesh plane uh, to divide that. Because we want to make it as simple as possible, I'm going to divide the width and the height to one, but you can increase that to more if you want to. doesn't matter because uh, at the end, we will have those groups uh, into more divisions. Okay, let me turn it off and go back. So for this example, it's going to be one. Uh, after we had a simple mesh plane, I'm going to use the mesh plus plugin. After we made the mesh plane, we're going to use uh, the mesh plus plugin. For this example, I've used the effects uh, anti snob uh, to make the final results. So you just have to give the mesh to the G input. The G is usually the mesh input. Uh, for T0 to T4, it's going to be a number slider between 0 and 1. And this is going to define uh, the shape of the mesh. You can see this is going to be the first parameter from 0 to 1, the second one, which is going to give you different results. Okay, let's go to the next part, which is uh, dividing the mesh into a group of faces. So what I want to do here is, first of all, extract the face boundaries of the mesh. This is really easy. You just have to use the uh, mesh uh, face boundaries tool. And if I bake it, you can see that we have each of these mesh faces uh, as a border. The reason we are using this is if you combine it with a simple mesh, utility, simple mesh, you can get each of these faces uh, separately, it's somehow like a mesh explode. So you can always uh, get the face boundaries and make a simple mesh from it if you want to extract all the faces uh, as separate mesh faces. Uh, okay, let's turn off uh, the mesh. And now what we want to do is to divide them into group. Uh, there are two steps we have to take. This is the cluster I'm going to explain in this video. And the next one is to color that so we can have the meshes with different colors. Uh, the first step is to divide the mesh. Uh, the most important inputs is the mesh we want to work with and the tolerance. And the tolerance is really important because, for example, maybe these two areas are similar. But this one, for example, is 2.12 and this one is 2.11, but they are similar as, uh, as an area, so we want to put them into one group. That is uh, why we need a tolerance to uh, calculate the same areas into one group. Okay, okay now that we have the mesh, uh, we're going to use the mesh area to uh, have the mesh area. As you can see here, if I connect a panel, uh, you can see that we have different mesh areas. Uh, for example, this one, 23, uh, is going to be also the same as this one. Uh, or for example, this one, 6.18, is going to also use for this 6.18. We have to put these meshes into one group and put these meshes into another group and so on. Uh, the next part is to convert this uh, area into a point. And the reason here is that somehow some of these uh, meshes have a slight different area. Okay, so for example, these two areas, if we have this number and this number, uh, you can see that these digits are a little bit different. And if we don't uh, consider the tolerance, these two are going to go into two separate groups. So what I want to do is to make a point and use the call duplicates with tolerance to fix that. Uh, after we have calculated the area, we're going to use a construct point to make a point with this uh, Z being the area. And then I usually use the call duplicates and put it to leave one and give it a tolerance. For this example, uh, a 0 0.1 is okay, but you can change that uh, based on your project. Okay, now when you fix that, it's going to give you another uh, series of points. The Z of these points are going to be the group uh, we need. Uh, so we're going to deconstruct the point and extract the Z, and now we have the groups. 
Uh, to make that into one group based on the tolerance, what I want to do is to find the difference of each of the areas of these mesh faces with these groups. Uh, you have to graph this. You find the subtraction from all of these areas with this Z, and it's going to give you these numbers. Uh, because we have negative numbers, I'm going to find the absolute, and then I'm going to sort them from the smallest to biggest. And as you can see here, zero is going to be fine, but some of these mesh areas have a little bit of a difference. So this one, for example, has a small difference, and also, and again, you can see. So what we have to do here is to pick the first uh, smallest one which is a list item and then use this member index uh, the first one is going to go to the member you can find it from set uh, sets uh, member index uh, so the smallest is going to go to the member and the set is going to be actually uh, the absolute without the negatives so what it's going to do if you flatten the index it's going to give you all of the mesh faces indexes uh, which we can use in the next steps Okay, now that we have the index, we have to sort them into groups. Uh, I'm going to explain the main one, which is replace path. We usually use the replace path uh, to put a series of uh, data or a geometry inside a new set of groups. So what I usually do is to uh, assume that each of those faces is flattened and that, uh, they are not in groups. I usually graph and simplify them. So uh, each of them goes into one group, something like this. And you give that to the first input, which is the data you want to process. Uh, the next thing you want to do is to use the set tree statistic and give it to the, your uh, geometry or data and use this uh, all path of the tree which is actually going to give you uh, the group numbers and give it to the search mask so uh, remember to graph and simplify give it to the first input and and the second input is going to be the path of the trees and now these indexes if you connect it to a data path you can find it from uh, params primitive uh, data path uh, it's actually going to convert these numbers into a data path uh, with these brackets. That is actually the data uh, target path we need. So you just give that to the R, which is going to uh, replace the path with these uh, path groups. And now we can see that you have all of those meshes into, uh, divided into groups. So we have six groups, and some of them have two, some of them have four, and it's divided into groups. And other outputs of the tree statistic, I've used that for the outputs, and uh, that's the cluster we have used. Okay, now that we have the uh, meshes into groups, uh, if you wanted to see the groups, you can go to sets, tree, and use this explode tree component, and just give the mesh to this output. And if you right click and match the outputs, uh, you can see that you have this first group. Let's bake it into layer one. Yeah, you can see it here. Layer two. Layer three. And so on. So you just have all of them inside a group. Because this uh, base mesh, I've changed it to a rectangle. Uh, these two have been inside one group, and these two have been inside another group. But if I make it uh, again into a square, and just go here, right click, and say match outputs, it's going to delete the extra group. And again, you can see that I can bake it. It's going to be those four. Uh, mesh faces in one group. So you can actually simply get the mesh output and use explode tree uh, to do that. But because I wanted to make an advanced example file, I used the colors, mesh colors to give them different colors. Uh, to do that, what we have uh, made for the output is uh, the index group, because we want to use that further in the example file, uh, the group count, which is going to show us that we have five uh, groups of colors and also the index of each of these faces. So if I connect a panel uh, Each of these faces have a unique group So for example the first mesh and the sixth mesh are in one group 
and so on. So we have used this member index index as an output. That's not really uh, complicated. What we want to do is to color them. And what you want to do is to give the base mesh, which is grouped uh, for the first input. The second input is the color we want. Because we want to extract a series of uh, gradient colors, I want to you explain how we're going to use that. The first is that you can go to params menu and in the input you have this uh, gradient and you can always change that with different presets if you want to. Uh, the most important input is the L0 and L1. So L0 is going to be here uh, and L1 is going to be here. So for example, if this input is zero, this color is going to be zero. And if this L1 is one, this color is going to be one. And uh, if you, for example, give a 0 0.5, it's going to extract this color. If you give it 0 0.25, it's going to extract this color. So that is uh, the, uh, the T input, and we're going to use that in our project. So using gradient is really easy to extract the colors we want. Uh, so what I have done is that the first input is zero uh, for the L0, so this is a zero number. Uh, because we want to have uh, colors for each of those groups, I have used the group count, which is actually five, and give it to the L1. Uh, because uh, when we have, for example, five group, it's going to be a zero, one, till four, and we have started from zero, uh, we have to minus this five by one. So it's going to be from zero to four, right? Uh, just right click your expression, we have x minus by one. Uh, now that we have the L0 and L1 and we can pick between these colors, uh, we just have to use the index uh, of each of these faces and give it to the T and now we have the color. But the problem here is that those colors uh, are not in groups and we have to uh, put them in the same groups of the mesh, okay? So what you have to do here, uh, one is if you just give this color to the mesh color and graft it, it's going to give you uh, the correct output. But the problem is that, uh, for example, if I bake that, you can see that the colors are correct, but the output of the groups is not because uh, it has divided, for example, into 20 groups of four, which is really not what we want. Instead of graphing the color, what I want to do is use this list item and pick up these colors based on this index of group. So you can always use this index of group if you want to pick up the colors, for example, and combine it with a list item and give it to a color so you have the mesh colors finally into a set of groups and you can see that the output is completely correct because we need uh, five groups of four, uh, which we can manage later. And uh, now again, you can use the explode tree. Remember to right click and match outputs. And if you want to manage it, you can simply say uh, the first group and bake it, the second group, the third one, fourth and the last one. So that's how you can do that. You can divide any mesh into a series of groups based on their area. Uh, for example, if I go to the mesh primitive and use this mesh sphere EX and give it to this input, uh, it's also going to divide that mesh into uh, different groups based on their area. So for example, if you go to the um, base mesh plane and use, for example, a subdivision, uh, but for example, just use a pinwheel 2 and give the mesh to it. Again, you can change the sliders from 0 to 1 for the T zeros. And usually if it says uh, if true, something like this, you can use a toggle. So for example, I can use a toggle and make it true false something like that. And if I give this uh, to the face boundaries and, and I go here to the mesh colors, you can see that we have uh, two groups, uh, which is a group of four and a group of one. So obviously these four are in one group and this one is in another group. If I want to, I can match the outputs and, and again, just simply bake that 
four in one group and another one in another group. So for this example, you can see that the gradient doesn't give you two colors. So what you can do here uh, instead of using a gradient is to use a swatch. I usually use a swatch here and uh, use two swatches with different colors, for example, and use the shift key to add it to the color. And now you can see that we can have different colors. So you can use multiple swatches if you have, for example, three or four groups and just give it to the color uh, input. Okay, that is basically how you can divide a mesh into a series of groups based on their colors. And I hope this tutorial was useful. Remember to like uh, this video, subscribe to our channel so you can get notified about our new video tutorials. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.